Getting started. Welcome to this module on reporting. In this module, you will learn why and when UNICEF performance reports are created, how to effectively prepare a report, and the most important information to include to ensure an acceptable report. On completion of this module, you will be able to answer the following five questions. Why is performance reporting important? How are reporting and the other elements of effective RBM linked? What are the differences between reporting on results and reporting on activities? Why do different UNICEF stakeholders have different reporting needs? What are the key elements for the management of the reporting function in a UNICEF office? Lesson 1. Reporting purposes. Reporting has several purposes and focuses determined by obligations to stakeholders and their information needs. Reports demonstrate how UNICEF has used resources to achieve results. Reporting is part of UNICEF's accountability to stakeholders, including beneficiaries, the UNICEF Executive Board, governments, partners and donors. Reporting is also used for internal purposes to reflect on progress and learn lessons for the way forward. Reporting demonstrates the results of an intervention. What else should reporting do? Drag and drop your answer to the empty speech bubble below. Most UNICEF performance reports are written to meet the information requests of specific audiences, internal and external to UNICEF. The first essential step in developing a results-based report is to clearly understand the information needs of the audience. Click on each image to learn more. It is important to bear in mind the recipient of the report and how they will use the information. In most cases, internal and external reports are used by recipients to extract the most important information they need for their own work. Will they be using information from your report to compile with information from other offices into a consolidated report? Are they specifically interested in quantitative data, or perhaps in human interest stories? With a clear vision of how your report will be used, you can focus the content on what is important to the reader. Most reporting requests include clear instructions of what is to be reported, as well as the required format. However, if there is uncertainty of the content to be provided, or the format for a particular report, Request further information from within your office, or if appropriate, directly from the party requesting the report. What information do you think best meets the needs of the following audiences? Select all the answers that apply. Lesson 2. Key Elements of Effective Reporting Reporting presents evidence that an initiative has contributed to the achievement of expected results and demonstrates how the results were achieved. A results-based report contains three main interconnected elements – results, analysis and UNICEF's contribution to these results. Click each sheet to learn more about what these elements should cover. This part consists of a description of the results that have been achieved, ideally with reference to the current status of the intervention indicators, and shows how the status of the indicators has changed from the baseline. The analysis part builds on the results achieved, and describes how the results and improvements in the indicators were achieved, with a focus on the work of the main implementing parties – government, civil society organisations, UNICEF, etc. The analysis section should also describe shortfalls and difficulties encountered, lessons learned, and how these have been or will be applied. 
The analysis is a key component of the report, bringing together the data to make the story. It is important that the analysis clearly portrays the achievement to the reader. This part describes the actions of UNICEF which have contributed to the achievement of the result. It is essential this section describes the technical assistance, advocacy and convening actions, evidence generation, capacity development and other actions, including potentially cash and supply assistance, which UNICEF has provided to contribute to achieve the result and why they were important. It is important that this section not merely report on activities undertaken, but also include the results to which the activities have contributed. Let's take a look at our example, the Pasmania programme. Reporting on the Pasmania programme. The primary school retention programme in Pasmania has been completed and reports have been written. Click on the sheet areas of a donor report to view examples of presenting the results, analysis and UNICEF's contribution. In 2015, preliminary data from the Pasmania Education Management Information System, EMIS, indicate dropout in primary education decreased by 4% compared to the previous year, which means 10,000 more children stayed in school rather than dropping out compared to data from 2011. This improvement is partly due to the broad-based advances in teaching methods applied by primary school teachers in addition to the ongoing outreach program and family engagement. Over 24,000 teachers successfully completed the training on the Modern Teaching Methods curriculum during 2015. These teachers represent 85% of the annual target and almost half of the target for the end of 2017. Monitoring data shows that over 95% of the teachers who completed the curriculum displayed an increase in their knowledge and application of modern teaching approaches. Teacher attendance improved overall and approximately 120,000 children reported improved interaction with their teachers. The teacher training in modern teaching methods was completed through expansion of the curriculum for Pasmania's teacher training schools. Training on the newly developed materials facilitated an orientation of staff at the teacher training schools to the new curriculum and provided techniques on how to introduce it to primary school teachers. In parallel to the teacher training, the programme worked with the National Parent Teacher Association, PTA, and several locally based civil society organisations to support 500 PTAs to monitor and report on teacher attendance. One challenge during implementation of the programme was the large variation in the quality of the relationship between parents and school staff in different schools. In some areas there was initial resistance from parents to participate in school activities. However, through continued engagement and dialogue, this was overcome. Once acceptance of the new approach was established at the school and community level, the results were the greatest. The programme strategy now includes expanded actions to build community and parent awareness of the approach and to provide information on the successes already seen in other communities. UNICEF's contribution. Reports should always demonstrate how UNICEF has contributed to achieving the result. Click on the sheet to view how the Pasmania programme report demonstrated UNICEF's contribution. Through a combination of national-level engagement and direct provision of resources to the most deprived areas, UNICEF's contribution to improving retention in primary school has been significant. Specifically, the sponsorship of knowledge exchange visits of government, civil society leaders and technical experts to two neighbouring countries, which had successfully addressed the teacher capacity issue, was pivotal to shifting policy and technical discourse. Working in close collaboration with other partners, UNICEF guided the development of the new teacher training curriculum and implementation of the refresher training for teachers and supervisors in all target districts. UNICEF also provided technical assistance and funding to government to expand the education management information system to regularly monitor and report on both student and teacher performance. Within the defined reporting requirements, there is considerable scope for how to effectively present information. Ultimately, readers of a UNICEF report are interested in the story of UNICEF's role in the intervention and how UNICEF contributed to the achievement of the results. What are some ways to tell this story? Take a moment to think about how the UNICEF story could be told. Done? Then let's proceed. You can tell the UNICEF story in various ways. Remember that it is essential to know the expectations of your audience and then meet those expectations by telling the story in the way that works best for your audience. 
Move the cursor over each image to learn more. Reporting against the expected results and indicator targets demonstrate progress toward achievement of what was planned. Take for example reporting on the Pasmania Primary School Retention Program. You could report on the activities which were undertaken. UNICEF directly supported the training of 2,500 teachers through the training of trainers and provision of course materials in targeted districts. UNICEF provided training to existing educational officers and supplied course materials over a period of three years. While this activity level information is true, it does not adequately describe what results have been achieved. Remember the planned result of the intervention is 15% decline of absenteeism of teachers. Readers want to know the status of actions toward achievement of this result, which will directly affect children's performance in school. Reporting at the results level focuses on what has been achieved and how it has affected people's lives. For example, the Primary School Retention Program report effectively reports on the actual results achieved. In 2015, 10,000 primary school pupils stayed in school rather than dropping out, compared to data from 2011, and teacher attendance improved overall. Lesson 3. Reporting Process an effective office will be ready for reporting, with clearly defined program results indicators which are regularly monitored. Clear work processes must be established to ensure that reports meet the needs of intended recipients and are efficiently developed. Reporting schedules sometimes do not match to the timing when monitoring data is available or the time when the results have been fully achieved and measured. During a typical country program cycle of five years, an office will have written five annual reports and a number of donor reports. While it's not always possible to fully report on results achieved, especially in the first year of an intervention, it should be possible to report on the current status of some or all of the results indicators. When developing donor agreements, be sure to pay careful attention to reporting deadlines. Ideally, your office should negotiate the donor reporting schedule so that you can maximize the use of information for example, last year I needed to report to a donor on the number of children under five sleeping under bed nets in a particular region. But this wasn't possible as the monitoring plan would not have this information available until the beginning of the following quarter. So I had to adjust my reporting time until I could write a meaningful report. Why is it critical to align your monitoring activities and availability of data with your reporting schedule? Choose the best answer. Results are about change, so it's important to use change language. Change language states what is changed rather than just describing what was done. A simple example. Yesterday I was at the bottom of the mountain, and today I am halfway to the top. Tomorrow I plan to be on the summit. This illustrates how we focus on results using change language, even when we are yet to reach them. You don't want to report that, I bought some boots, started walking uphill yesterday, and I will walk some more tomorrow, as this is less informative. Identify examples of change language by selecting yes or no for each phrase. Even with good monitoring data, proper reporting requires preparation time. A well-functioning UNICEF office will manage its reporting requirements by covering all of the following areas. Click each point to learn more about managing the reporting function. 
an effective UNICEF office will have clearly defined roles among staff for assuring the availability of monitoring data, drafting each element of the report, compiling the submissions into a final draft, and quality assurance of the content before the report is finalised. Not all involved persons need to be strong writers, but at least one needs to be able to write a complete and compelling report. Ensure there is up-to-date information on the status of the results indicators, monitoring reports, as well as other information including funds provided and utilised for the intervention, and information from recent evaluations relevant to the intervention. Ensure staff are aware of the format required for this specific report and key issues to be addressed. Have a schedule of reports due in the next 12 months and make sure the schedule is always up to date and used to plan for report development and completion by each report deadline. It is important to prepare the report in advance of the deadline to ensure sufficient time for the production of a quality report. Ensure the report addresses the elements outlined in the funding proposal which UNICEF is committed to act on. Note, if necessary, any evolution of the programme action since the time the proposal was accepted. UNICEF's financial reports distinguish between expenditure and commitments, so it is important that the narrative in a donor report is consistent with the financial report. Officers should ensure that the narrative distinguishes between funds actually expended and instances where funds have been committed, that is, purchase orders placed or funds provided to partners but not yet expended. We've almost completed the final module of the Results-Based Management course, which is on results reporting. Congratulations! Shall I keep... Reports should be viewed as tools to communicate an initiative's achievements, UNICEF's contribution to those achievements, as well as challenges and lessons learned. They fulfil UNICEF's accountability to report on UNICEF performance, while also assisting with our learning and continual improvement. A well-run UNICEF office will easily report on the contributions that it makes to results for children because it actively practices all the elements of results-based management. The office will have a clear theory of change for how results are to be achieved, clearly defined results and indicators which are regularly updated, sound program implementation, regular monitoring of program actions, periodic evaluations of the most important elements of the country programme, effective management of its reporting responsibilities. That's all for now. Good luck in applying what we've learned in this course in your work with UNICEF. In this module, you learned about the reporting function of RBM. You should now be able to explain the purposes and uses of performance reporting. Describe the links between reporting and the other elements of effective RBM. Explain the differences between reporting on results and reporting on activities. Recognise the reporting needs of different UNICEF stakeholders. Explain the key elements for the management of the reporting function in a well-run UNICEF office.